In the last video, we created two VLANs on this switch, a VLAN 10 and a VLAN 20, to segment these users from each other. And we put those VLANs, VLAN 10, on two ports on the switch, and then we put VLAN 20 on some ports over here. So now, all of a sudden, turns out we need to add more devices to the network. We've got a new switch, S2. We have a new computer that needs to go into the VLAN 20 network at 192.168.20.9. And then we have a voice over IP phone that then connects to the switch, and then the phone connects to the PC. This is the way you implement a phone oftentimes is you connect the switch to the switch port on the phone and then from the PC port you switch port to the PC. So this user needs to be on VLAN 10 and we're going to need to set up a voice VLAN for the phone that has a higher priority. Then we're going to need to connect this switch to the other switch. And so to do this, a couple of things. Let's get this switch first of all with some basic configurations. So enable conf t to get to global config mode. The first thing I'm going to do is change the host name of the switch to S2 so we know which switch we're dealing with. And I'm going to create VLAN 10 and give it the name and VLAN 20 and give it the name and then I'll create VLAN 120, which I've decided to use for the voice VLAN, and I'll give it the name voice. So we'll use VLAN 120 for our voice over IP network. So now we have the VLANs configured on this new switch. Now we have some choices here. Now to connect these two switches together, the best way to do it is to use a trunk. And the reason is, if you use a trunk, you only need to use one cable to connect the two switches together. Now since both switches have VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, what we could do is you could also make two more switch ports in VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 and then put two switch ports over here in VLAN 10 and 20 and have two connections going across. But you would need one connection for VLAN 10, then you'd need another connection for VLAN 20, and then you'd probably want another connection for VLAN 120. And so you'd be using three cables going VLAN to VLAN across the switches, and it'd be a waste of cables and a waste of switch ports. So the best way to do it is to implement a trunk. And so that's what I'm going to talk about now is how to implement that trunk. So with a trunk, we only need to use one cable, and we'll use our faster switch port, Gigabit Ethernet 01, and we'll connect it over here to Gigabit 01. So we now we have this Gigabit gigabit connection. Now right now by default when we connect these across this is a VLAN 1 connection to the default VLAN 1 connection over here and it's an access port because it goes from dynamic auto to access. So it's not a trunk yet we have to configure the trunk. So when we configure the trunk we'll be making this link a trunk and when you when you create a trunk what you do is you basically configure it for 802.1Q protocol VLAN tagging. And so when the packets cross the trunk, they get tagged with their VLAN ID so you know which VLAN is crossing the trunk. And the whole idea with the trunk is, is that multiple VLANs can cross a trunk, not just a single VLAN. So that's what we'll be doing, we'll be setting that up. So on, we'll start with S1 here, and we're gonna need to add VLAN 120 to S1 and then we'll configure our trunk. So I'll open up the switch and I'm going to change the host name to S1 now so that we know what we're dealing with. And we're going to create VLAN 120 and give it the name voice. So we have a voice VLAN. And then I'm going to go into interface gigabit 0 slash 1 and I'm going to turn this switch port from dynamic auto mode into um, uh, a trunk mode for a trunk. So it, the command is switch port mode trunk. So now it turns into a trunk. And when you turn this switch port into a trunk, since this switch port over here is in dynamic auto mode, 
this port will automatically turn into a trunk when it starts receiving information from this switch port that it's a trunk. And this will auto configure itself as a trunk. So that's the benefit of having a port in dynamic auto mode is that it will auto configure into a trunk. However, that's a security risk. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. It's a security risk to leave a switch port in dynamic auto mode because at any point it could turn into a trunk. And by default, a trunk left alone without any additional configurations, a trunk has access to all VLANs. So all VLANs can cross a trunk. So right now this switch port is going to turn into a trunk. So what we'll do is, so that we're following best practices, is we'll go into the switch and we'll configure it as a trunk statically. We'll set it up as a static configuration. So we'll say interface gigabit zero slash one switch port mode trunk and give it the static configuration of a trunk. So now we've statically configured gigabit 01 on this switch port as a trunk and gigabit 01 on this switch port as a trunk. Now we'll set up our two switch ports here and here to be in their respective VLANs. So port 10 will be in VLAN 20. So we'll go interface F0 slash 10 and we'll put that as an access port for a single VLAN and then We'll say switch port access VLAN 20. So now port 10 is in VLAN 20. And now we're going to do a different type of configuration for this switch port right here. Port 5 is going to need to be in VLAN 10 and we'll also need um, the voice configuration for that switch port. So we'll say interface F0 slash 5 and we're going to turn it into an access port which normally would be for just one VLAN, VLAN 10 here. Whoops, In bad configuration. Rather switch port mode access and then switch port access VLAN 10. So there's the correct configuration. We go into interface F0 slash 5, we turn it into an access port statically, then put it in VLAN 10. And then what we're going to do is we're also going to set it up for voice connection. So we're going to say MLS, multi-layer switching, quality of service, trust, COS, class of service. And then we'll say switch port voice VLAN 120 and we set it up to also this switch port will not only service VLAN 10 but it'll also service VLAN 120 which will have a, um, a higher priority uh, more packets will be able to get sent across this switch port enabling phone calls to be clear and um, more packets uh, more throughput for voice packets all right, so there we go. We set that up here. Switch port voice VLAN 120. And a voice VLAN is a special type of VLAN. Let's take a look at it. If we go in now and we say show interface, whoops, F0 slash 5, and then we say switch port. So show us interface fast ethernet 0 slash 5, but show us the switch port. And we can get information and see the types of commands related to VLANs and related to switch ports. So you see here, show interface F0 slash 5 switch port. There's the command, port 5, the switch port's enabled. Notice it's an access port. Trunking, administrative trunking, you can see here right now, native encapsulation, negotiation of trunking is off. The access mode is VLAN 10, student. The trunking native mode is VLAN 1 by default. So if, if it was a trunk, the native VLAN would be VLAN 1. The voice VLAN, here it is, is 120. And then this is about private VLANs, if you're going to set up private VLANs. And private VLANs uh, help you to isolate one switch port from another, even if they're on the same VLANs, which could be used like in a situation if you maybe have a hotel or something, and you want to make sure that ports can't talk to each other for the different rooms you could use private VLANs. 
let's see here. Um, operational private VLAN, none. You can see there's none. Uh, trunking VLANs enabled. We're, this is not a trunk. It's just a voice. But I wanted to show you some of the types of um, some of the type of information on the switch port by doing a show interface and then the switch port. You can see you get quite a bit of information on that um, show interface, the switch, the, the interface, fast ethernet zero slash five and then switch port. All right, so we've got the two ports configured. We're not really gonna worry about setting up voice. V setting up voice over IP is not really part of the CCNA, but you should know just a little bit of the basics. Okay, we could turn on the phone, however, by just plugging it in. We can at least plug it in, look at that. So we plug in the phone and now the phone's up. So at least we won't see the red lights. All right, so we have that set up here and we have the trunk set up. Now it's time to talk about the different types of VLANs that you can set up. 